Hi everybody, welcome to TIA Now, I'm Clarence Reynolds. Blockchain is the popular engine behind cryptocurrencies, but where else can distributed ledger technology be useful and what are the barriers to scale? David Tenenhaus is VMware's Chief Research Officer and he joins us with insights. David, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Clarence. Great to be with you and especially here at Mobile World Congress. Absolutely. Let me ask you a question. Where are we starting to see blockchain use cases outside of crypt cryptocurrencies? Uh, they're just all over and it, it's super exciting. Uh, at VMware, naturally, we focus on enterprise applications. Those are our customers. Uh, not surprisingly, you're seeing this in the financial community and FinTech, uh, that all sorts of different types of exchanges that people are interested in bringing up. But I think the place that's really exploding is supply chain. So in many, many different areas of supply chain, uh, you see people wanting to use blockchain, uh, running experiments, running POCs, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, going forward, we think pretty much anytime enterprises want to do business with each other, this is a technology that can dramatically reduce the barriers to federation across enterprises, the barriers to federation across governments, uh, and in fact between the public sector and the private sector. It's pretty exciting. What are some of the um, interesting barriers that blockchain has when it comes to scale? Because that's really a concern. Yeah, it is. And again, we take this enterprise perspective. So we started looking at blockchain about three and a half years ago. Um, and you know, blockchain, as you know, is really the uh, ledger that's underneath cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. And we worked back from that and said, well, what else could you do with that kind of ledger technology? And that got us to thinking about federated ledgers and how they can be used to promote trust across organizations. Uh, if you had this sort of immutable record, this unchangeable record of the transactions. So, from that point of view, we find that uh, the Bitcoin blockchain protocol, the consensus protocol that's used to agree what are the blocks in the chain, uses a, an approach called proof of work, where essentially, you know, what are known as the miners in the Bitcoin world, these are people that compete to solve crypto puzzles, so they're solving cryptography puzzles, they're expending a tremendous amount of energy, so not only is there, by the way, a throughput problem, there's an energy and uh, environmental problem here uh, if you use that protocol. But that protocol's actually got a deliberate break in it. It's deliberately designed that it's, as the miners get faster, the puzzles get harder. So the throughput of the Bitcoin blockchain is kind of fundamentally and deliberately limited. And the latency also, the delay till you know whether your transaction's gone through, is also limited. So at VMware we started a few years ago researching alternative technologies there's a well-known sort of area of computer science called Byzantine fault tolerance. This dates back, you know, in terms of its name, the name, not the technology, is based on, you know, the Byzantine era where the generals were all conspiring against each other. So if you're in an environment where you're dealing with other parties and, you know, they may be compromised, you don't know quite if you can trust them, a Byzantine fault tolerant protocol is what you want. We've been looking at making that sort of protocol very scalable. So, you know, our researchers have done a great job. We're now at the point where we can do thousands of transactions per second on a very distributed, highly replicated basis, and more importantly, with very low latency. So we got the latency down to tens of milliseconds. So, you know, the scalability with the cryptocurrency protocols, not happening uh, with Byzantine fault tolerance, and especially with SBFT, scalable Byzantine fault tolerance, we're going to be there. That's great. When are we going to start to see more blockchain standards? Well, you know, probably it'll take a while till we have what you might think of as true standards with the seal of a standards body, you know, like the TIA or IEEE or others. Uh, however, one of the, the neat things in the software world is if you think about it, uh, what you really care mostly about is interoperability, and that's usually can be achieved with what you might think of as adapters. Like, you know, here when we travel to Mobile World Congress, we all carry our physical adapters for our electrical plugs. The neat thing about software adapters is all they really cost you is a bit of processing and a bit of you know, memory. So unlike, you know, you, unlike a physical plug, there's very, very little cost to these adapters. So you know, I think the, the key thing here is going to be able to get interoperability between different types of blockchains. So you'll probably get sort of de facto standardization within different industries 
on slightly different variations. Something again our researchers have been working on is how do we get cross blockchain transactions? So a transaction in one blockchain can point to a transaction in another. And so I think those interoperability standards will be the key. This is sort of like what happened in the early days you know, of the internet. The IP protocol was a protocol that enabled interoperability. Lower down in the stack, you could have all sorts of different protocols going on. And you know, that was key. Again, with the web, HTTP went on top of everything else. So I think that interoperability is going to be key. Here at Mobile World Congress, we're hearing a lot about IoT. Is blockchain going to be the thing that secures IoT? I think it will be part of the story, right? So it it's, uh, provides some you know, very interesting opportunities. Uh, for example, you know, there's kind of relatively dumb stuff with IoT. Um, where can I get the latest technical, authoritative technical information on a thing? Before I can secure the thing, I kind of need to know uh, what its properties are. So a blockchain could be a great place to record that. What's the latest software load uh, for this? Where's the latest, most up-to-date, authoritative firmware? A blockchain can be a great place to publish that. Um, and then there's some very interesting, uh, uh, I think, work being done on saying, can I make authentication? And, and particularly the revocation of certificates, put that out on a blockchain so things can quickly check what certificates have been revoked and that sort of thing. So blockchain can certainly help, uh, on the other hand, I think we're going to need to do a lot of other things to secure IoT. Uh, at VMware, we've been really focusing on the gateways. If you think about it, you've got the things themselves. They're very low price, very low cost. And if we start building them into buildings and factories, some of these things are going to be around for 20, 30 years. During their lifetime, some of those are going to get compromised. So what we've been doing is saying, let's, let's step one step back to the gateways. Think of these as the moral equivalent to the Wi-Fi access points and let's get really good at securing and managing those. And from those places, we can then do patches and upgrades to the things themselves. So that's just another example of you know, what we're going to need to secure IoT. Uh, it, it's going to really be, a, I think, a, a, a large effort involving many different uh, components. So can IoT help blockchain? Yeah, so that's kind of interesting is that, you know, we talked about how blockchain can help IoT. Uh, Interestingly enough, if you uh, think about these supply chains, uh, along the way in the supply chain, you might have IoT things like RFID scanners, badge readers, uh, temperature monitors, watching uh, materials as they move through the supply chain. And so effectively, things could be recording information in the blockchain and making that you know, supply chain blockchain a complete record. Uh, you can think of these things as witnesses of what's going on along the way through the supply chain. And again, using the blockchain so we get a complete record all the way from the origination of the thing, you know, through its delivery to customer, and then ultimately even through its lifetime as it's being used. Well, thank you so much for being with us today and for bringing your insights, Dave. Great, thank you. Enjoy MWC.